Cancer is a disease in which some of the body's cells grow uncontrollably and spread to other parts of the body. Cancer is a genetic disease caused by changes to genes that control the way our cells function, especially how they grow and divide. The President of India, Draupadi Murmu, launched India's first homegrown gene therapy for cancer at IIT Bombay. Speaking on the occasion, the President said the launch of India's first gene therapy is a major breakthrough in our battle against cancer. As this line of treatment, named CART Cell Therapy, is accessible and affordable, it provides a new hope for the entire humankind. She expressed confidence that it will be successful in giving new hopes to countless cancer patients. Cell therapy is accessible and affordable. It provides a new hope for the whole of humankind. I am sure it will be successful in giving new lives to countless patients. Everyone associated with this humanistic initiative deserves congratulations. CAR T cell therapy or chimeric antigen receptor T cell therapy is a form of immunotherapy and gene therapy. It requires complex genetic engineering to modify the patient's immune cells, especially T cells, and make them fight cancer. CAR T cell therapy is considered to be one of the most phenomenal advances in medical science. It has been available in the developed nations for some time, but it is extremely costly and beyond the reach of most patients around the world. What is new about the therapy being launched today, as I understand it, is that it costs 90% less than what is available elsewhere. I am told that this is the world's most affordable CAR T cell therapy. Moreover, it is also an example of the Make in India initiative, a signing example of Atmanir for Bharat. The development of this therapy in India over the past decade and its approval in October 2023 speaks volumes about the skills of Indian scientists and physicians. India's first CAR T cell therapy is developed through collaboration between the Indian Institute of Technology Bombay and Tata Memorial Hospital in, in association with industry partner Immuno ACT. So, we have two of institutes, Indian's final research institutes in their respective fields joining hands with industry for a humanitarian cause. This is a praise or the examples of academia industry partnership we should inspire many more similar efforts. Since the beginning of civilization, we have made unbelievable progress in various walks of life. In recent centuries, science has helped us treat a variety of diseases. There used to be many life-threatening diseases earlier that have been wiped out and forgotten now. They are used to be many life-threatening elements that have been wiped out and forgotten now. Cancer, however, remains one of those complications that remind us of our limits. It has claimed a large number of lives around the world. In India, 14.6 lakh people succumbed to it in 2022 and the number is likely to rise to 15.7 lakh by 2025. We can only imagine the pain and suffering of so many patients and their families. Yet, there is no room for pessimism. How can there be when we have succeeded against so many diseases? Inspired by the history of so many successful battles scientists are battling on. With early diagnosis and timely intervention, more and more people have been cured. Their success in turn motivates others in creating a positive mindset. It is through such slow but 
incremental steps that we will overcome the demon of cancer. Cancer, however, remains one of those complications that remind us of our limitations. The therapy being launched today is of course a major step, in fact a new milestone in the journey of healthcare innovation in India. It puts us on the global map of advanced medical care as well as on the elite list of countries which have access to this most innovative technology platform. I gather it has already received high praise from experts abroad. What we have before us is also an inspiring example of making academic research practical and viable. I am told this therapy will be available across the country in major center hospitals providing new hope to patients and their families. Moreover, this affordable treatment can be made available to all patients across the world. That will be in tune with our vision of Vasudeva Kutumbaka. The therapy being launched today is a major step, in fact, a new milestone in the journey of healthcare innovation in India. When I learned about the new therapy being launched today, I was pleasantly surprised because IIT Bombay is renowned not only in India but across the world as a model of technology education. Here, in this case, technology is not only being put in the service of humanity, but partnership have been with an eminent institution from another field as well as with industry. This has been made possible by the focus IIT Bombay has placed on research and development over the last three decades. IIT Bombay has been setting up several centers of excellence and technology incubators. Investing funds received from the government as an institute of eminence, it has established cutting edge research and development facilities. As a result, Bombay IIT has earned a significant number of intellectual property rights to its key research areas include artificial intelligence, machine learning and industry 4.0 technologies among others. These are the advances that are shaping our tomorrow. The Indian Institutes of Technology together form a glorious chapter in the saga of modern India. IIT Bombay in particular has been the pride of our education as well as technology sectors. This gene therapy, jointly developed by IIT Bombay and Tata Memorial Center, will help fight various forms of cancer, including blood cancer. India has the second highest number of cancer patients in Asia. Scientists have expressed hope that development of this therapy will prove to be a boon for cancer patients. Medical treatment for cancer is likely to become cheaper by adopting this technique. Cancer also remains one of the biggest causes of mortality worldwide due to which health experts regularly alert the public about its concerns. Gene therapy is the treatment of a disease by introducing a gene into cells and tissues. Gene therapy is a way to fix a genetic problem at its source. By adding a corrected copy of a defective gene, gene therapy promises to help diseased tissues and organs to work properly. This approach is different from traditional drug-based approaches which treat symptoms but not the underlying genetic problems. The primary function of gene therapy includes replacing or inactivating the genes that are responsible for causing a disease. In many cases, gene therapy could also be used to introduce new genes that are capable of fighting against a specific condition in the body. With gene therapy, doctors can help deliver a healthy copy of a gene to cells inside the body. Gene therapy is the replacement of mutated genes with healthy ones by delivering a gene through viral vectors. 
This may replace a damaged or deactivated gene or introduce new genes for patients who are suffering from genetic disorders. Viral vectors act like a carrier transporting healthy genes into cells. Most carriers are modified viruses that do not cause illness. There are also certain types of bacteria and circular DNA molecules called plasmids. Additional methods to pack and deliver genetic material such as nanoparticles, lipid containing packets of enzymes called liposomes and electric currents are all actively being researched. Gene therapy can be a viable option for the disease for which no other reliable treatment is available. The number of injections required for treatment is comparatively low and costs significantly less than the conventional alternatives. Conditions treated once by gene therapy are remedied for life. One of the major benefits of gene therapy is that the removal of problematic genes from the body of future parents removes any chances of their baby being born with the same condition. As time progresses and the technology gets more advanced, gene therapy is becoming more effective and safe to use. Normal DNA can be transferred into a person's cells by a variety of methods. One method for this is to use viruses because some viruses have the ability to insert their genetic material into human DNA. Normal DNA is inserted into the virus through a chemical reaction which then infects the person's cells transmitting the DNA into the nucleus of those cells. One of the concerns regarding insertion using a virus is the potential reactions to the virus similar to an infection. Another concern is that the new normal DNA may disappear after some time or fail to be incorporated into new cells causing the genetic disorder to reappear. Additionally, antibodies against the virus may develop leading to a rejection reaction by the transplanted organ. Another method of gene insertion uses liposomes which are microscopic sacs coated with a layer of lipid. Liposomes can be configured to contain DNA that can be absorbed by a person's cells, thereby delivering their DNA to the cell nucleus. Sometimes this method does not work because the liposomes are not absorbed into the person's cells. It could also be that the new gene does not work as expected or is eventually lost. For example, modifying a chemical reaction called methylation can alter gene function causing increased or decreased productivity of certain proteins or the production of different types of proteins. Such methods are being experimentally tested to treat some cancers. Gene therapy is also being studied experimentally in transplantation therapy. By altering the genes of transplanted organs to make them more compatible with those of the recipient, the organ recipient is less likely to reject the transplanted organ. In this way, the recipient does not need to receive immunosuppressive drugs which may have serious side effects. This type of treatment is still at an experimental stage.